Hello, everyone. Um, I am Dean Atta, and I am delighted to be hosting Gate Light Live once again. Um, I hope you can all see me. Let me know if you're tuned in. Um, Charlotte's just waved, so I know people have started to join. Thank you for joining in. Hi, Andres. Hi, Jessica. Um, this is really wonderful to be doing this again for the Gate Theatre. Um, if anyone was watching two weeks ago, we did a takeover on their Twitter and it was really fun. And um, we had some amazing poets taking part. And today is going to be like that, but over here on Instagram. So I'm really excited to see how this platform does for us with our live event. We have done a little rehearsal earlier today with the six performers because we wanted this to go as well as can be. There still might be technical difficulties because we're all still getting used to all of this stuff. Um, maybe some of you are, you know, Insta savvy already. But for me, apart from posting pictures, I only really learned to use my story quite recently. <laughs> so um Instagram is a good platform for us. Twitter was good fun for us a couple of weeks ago. And who knows, maybe we'll be on Facebook. Let's try all the social media and see which one works. Who's been on Zoom this week? It's been, um, yeah, quite a lot of online stuff going on, I'm sure. So um, thank you for joining us. Um, I hope you are up for a night or a few, you know, half an hour, let's say, of, of poetry. So I'll start because I know we've got you watching now. So um, as you're listening, hi, Nikita. Nikita was part of At The Gate Late last week, two weeks ago. And um, yeah, and we've got oh, lots of hearts. Um, I don't know if you're watching the, the comments as well as I am, but do comment, tell me where the world you are, um, because I'm really keen to know where everyone is watching from. And I'll shout you out um, if I get the chance in between the poets. Um, so I'm going to start with a poem now. The theme of this whole um, event this evening is home or returning home. And we have been um, using this theme as a kind of way to anchor us and uh, bring us together in the performances tonight. And also um, the gate is um, going to be staging at some point a production based on Derek Walcott's Omeros. And um, that is a kind of epic poem slash um, kind of play that he's written, um, inspired by um, Greek mythology. And um, that's really exciting for me. Hi from Leighton, someone says. So um, I'm in Glasgow, by the way. So um, this is really wonderful for me to take part um, you know, the Gates, the theatre in London and the fact that we are doing this live now from Glasgow is really exciting. And we have other poets joining us from Edinburgh, Glasgow, London, Brighton. Um, so we want to know where you are as well as you're watching. So my first poem is on the theme of home. And I actually moved up here to Scotland from London to live with my partner, who is a doctor and has a job in a hospital nearby. And um, yeah, it's been an interesting time for the NHS, as we know, and um, for anyone working in kind of caring and medical professions, it's been very challenging. And we did the applause for um, NHS and carers recently, and um, that inspired me to write this poem about my um, partner, Tom. So this is called Clapping for the NHS, and it's for my boyfriend, Tom. Did you hear them clapping for you last night on your way to work? I woke to an empty bed again, blackout curtains for you to sleep through the day. You've had another night of uncertainty. I've had another night of you away from me. I do what I can to pass the time. FaceTime my mother and we cook the same dinner, host an online open mic, read the books I've been wanting to read for months. You'll be back on day shifts next week, but the light of day will not provide us with the certainty we so crave. Everyone tells me you are brave. I know you are afraid. And that's OK, my love. That's OK. That was my poem for Tom and the NHS. And um, hope you enjoyed that. 
We're going to have um, our first poet join us very shortly. Her name is Jessica, and um, she is standing by. You're so good. She is here with us and was actually um, booked a fortnight ago to be part of um, this uh, that we did on Twitter. And here you are now. So it's been two weeks. Um, we <laughs> tried to have you on Twitter, and now we're on Instagram, and it's working. So. Thank you. You back. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank sure you. I think, but oh. that was a beautiful poem. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, and I'm really looking forward to hearing yours. But before we do, uh, tell us where in the world you are. I'm in London. Which You're is, in London. Yeah, I'm a Londoner through and through. Oh, so. Okay. Um, so, what does home mean to you? Does Does home mean London? Does home mean the house you're in right now? Yeah, I mean, I think at the moment, yeah, like I kind of, I'm quite an adaptable person. I spend a lot of time on my own, like at home. Mm -hmm. so kind of, yeah, feel, my home's pretty multi-purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I, yeah, it's interesting reflecting on like what home means at this moment, because obviously like home is a pretty tricky place for lots of people right now. It's mm -hmm. not a very nice place to be cooped up. And I guess, yeah, hopefully my poem is sort of, my first poem is a little bit around that, so... Okay, let's hear it. Um, so this one's called Demons. When the demons come, do not fight them. You will only lose. Welcome them in. Invite them for a cup of tea. Ask them to hang their fangs up in the hall and put their claws on the kitchen table. Invite them to relax, recline and take a pause. Ask them their favorite book where they grew up. Wage peace, not war. Reconcile your differences. You'll understand then that the fear they make is just for show, that they're more scared than you are, after all. Mm, thank you. Wow. So you've got another one you want to share as well? Yeah, is that right? It's, I yes, guess, it, please. it felt kind of relevant again, like, because it's, it's, it's called time, and it's about time, but I think, again, we're, like, reassessing our relationship is to time, and for Londoners who were so busy before, like, it's a big adjustment. So, yeah, mm. it's time. Another year old and not wise, wishing to grow younger with age as I watch time run past outside the window. Autumn overstayed its welcome and winter wouldn't budge until suddenly summer ambushed me, caught me off guard and dislodged me from myself. Time heals only because it forgets. An extraordinary thing. Filled with that much pain, I'm surprised we get up and yet we do, again and again, because time is an ocean, time is a train, time is a dance, a marathon, a game, time is a song that others sing, time is seasons, wheels, trees, time is their turning leaves and the pages of a book you haven't read. Time is colours, time's a rod and a whip, time's a circle, it's a kiss, but above all, it's a gift, it's all we have, it's this. Thanks. Oh, well, thank you. What an amazing way to spend our time sharing <laughs> poetry. Um, those are really beautiful. Um, so people can find you obviously here on, on Instagram if they want to see more of your work. Is there anywhere else you want them to look for you? Yeah, I've got a, I put my poetry on my website, which is um, jessicarosenorman.com. Um, I do have a subscription, so, you know, sign up. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, no, it's good because... You, it's good to know who's actually reading your stuff or looking at your stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, in, in the last three months. So, you know, the only way is up, I would say. The so only way is up. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. And I hope, um, well, look after London for me. I'm missing it a lot. Um, yeah. All my family is in London. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, really tough not being able to get, get to them and see them. But Thank goodness for technology. I get to FaceTime them and all of that. So, yeah, you stay well. Yeah, thank you. You Take too. Care. Bye. Bye. All right. So Jessica is there in London and um, do follow her and see more of her work. And um, just scrolling through to see where other people are. Um, so where are you? I, I just hear... I'm just seeing lots of people saying like, amazing, well done, Jess, clap, clap, hearts, hearts. So no one's telling me where they are. Um, hopefully you'll tell me where you are in a moment. But Andres is here 
um, to join us. And I know where Andres is, um, but I'll leave the jacket. What am I it's doing? Like, it's a shirt jacket, yeah. It's so cool. It's I very bright, it. yeah, and it's like my, my back lighting is freaking out with it. Oh, it looks amazing. I, you know, I've, I've done bright as well. I think bright. I know, bright. I like that, like neon day glow cardigan. Yeah. <laughs> um, people have said, yeah, they're loving the jacket. You're getting comments on your jacket already. Um, this is amazing. And we've got people with us from Canterbury. We've got people with us in London. Um, where are you? Andrea. I'm in Edinburgh, so I'm not far from you, representing Ooh. Scotland. Yeah, Edinburgh had some sad news today, didn't it? I know, yes. Oh gosh, the whole festival season, that, uh, that was a heartbreak. <laughs> really heartbreaking. It's when the city really comes alive, is August in Edinburgh. Yeah, Edinburgh. yeah. It's just such a great way to connect in the art that is brought here and then made here, you know. Um, and yeah, I just feel for everyone, especially, you know, everyone who had shows in mind or were working towards things. I know you were actively working for stuff, the book fest. And um, yeah, I had a few projects too. I, I, yeah, we're hoping that we're going to find alternatives. So I can't say much, but, but it's still the original plan was made for the festival and for people to be in rooms. And so that's a bit of a heartbreak, but We'll find a way. <laughs> so you also, you moved to Edinburgh for love, didn't you? Like I, I moved did. To Edinburgh for love. Um, yeah. How's that working out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been married, gosh, six years now. Uh, moved to Scotland two years ago, which is funny because I moved like a month after I met you in London when we did a gig together. So... What a, what a few years it's been. Yeah. So is, does Edinburgh feel like home? Does Scotland feel like home to you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think of all the places I've lived in the world, I feel like I've found a real sense of community. And I think for me, that's been my concept of home for the past few years. It's not necessarily a building or a place that I live, but I would say it's the city or the people I live with in the larger sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's hear your poetry, because I know that's what Okay, yeah, I'm, thank you. I'm gonna do two uh, short poems, and yeah, I'm just gonna do them back to back. Uh, yeah, so this one uh, is called It Had Been So Long. Opening the door of a photo album, I decide amidst chaos to remember. Remember what? To remember our wedding day, how we flung open the door greeted by music, walking side by side as we went from who we were to who we became after I do. I realized we were at the beginning when we said, till death do us part, in sickness and in health, promises. I smile at you in that photo on a London bench outside a red brick library. Every day I return to you, your safety, an opening, an entrance through a door. Even through the ups and downs, even after distant migrations, I can still remember what it is to open the door and find you. It had been so long since I looked at that album of memories of a single day. And I was grateful for the time to pause and open the long lost door to find your black and white face smiling back at me. Uh, and this is just, yeah, this poem I wrote a few weeks ago, sort of at the start of COVID-19, uh, where my office is in Edinburgh, you can see the castle. And I was very inspired by the idea of the city and that semblance of it feeling like home. So this is New Riki. <laughs> Brick after brick, atop red dust roads, who guard the secrets that it holds, scattered about in chaotic order of varied heights, plains, and mortar. In hidden alleys, I've run through sodded, fleeing memories of long ago haunted. As I run up the steps of one Miss Brody, I think of my old life, and I cherish new me. Brick after brick, which led me here, which once was unfamiliar and unclear, is now known to me, part of who I am, I am hidden alleys and their stories. The steeple rising up near the castle, the sky as blue as boyish pastel. This place in some ways has truly taken what once was lost and already breaking. 
Clouds hang above the gabled roofs, the stony lanes no longer hoof, no longer prating ladies in waiting, instead carrying our loud, angry voices. This city is becoming my homeland, these bricks and cobbles, my brethren, my soul, it yearns to protect and uplift her, to fight the cause and uphold respect here. Brick after brick, I will build a home up with vistas of a castle and ancient rock, but it will not keep my fellow person out, instead will be a beacon that calls to all. I will show you that a city can hold space for every shade, type, character of human race can house every voice of ancient Babylon, can be an island oasis we all live on. This city, this country, once was old, can still be that, but so much more, can be modern, forward-thinking, bold, expansive, inclusive, new, can be more. Oh, thank you. Thank wow. you. Um, so are you finding writing helpful in these times for you? Um, I really am, yeah. I think... Uh, feeling like I can sort of live in another world than the one I'm currently inhabiting right now has been very helpful. So I'm working right now on a novella. And I think just by of this space, mm -hmm. uh, personally for me, I think is helping me manage my mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and connecting I find as well, like being able to reach people or be part of writing groups, which we are, and yes, it's just yes. Really, really important. Um, how can people find you other than your Instagram? Is there anyone else, where, anywhere else you want them to look? Yeah, so on Twitter, you can follow me, um, Andres N for Nicholas Orderica, Um Or, yeah, I've published quite a bit. I, I do a lot of sort of essay writing. So if you Google me and The Skinny, which is a Scottish uh, magazine, um, I'm there, or you can support some print magazines. I'm in Gutter or Four Four Ink magazine. Uh, yeah, support right. indie publishers. Yes, and support Scottish indie publishers. Yes, well. definitely. <laughs> I can see lots of our Scottish friends are joining and watching us, and Nadine's watching, and Jess is watching. Um, and I know we've got Sean later on, another amazing Scottish poet. So um, I'm going to say bye to you for now. Bye. Keep watching, yeah? <laughs> yes, I will. Thank you so much for this. Okay, take care. Bye. We're going to have Christy joining us shortly from London um, and I'm really excited to hear uh, their poetry and here here we go so um, I'm really yeah chuffed that we're doing this and that it's connecting um, lots of different poets and lots Hi. of different cities hello <laughs> how are you I'm good how are you doing lovely to I'm see really you I'm really good I'm really good oh you've got your lighting show, us, your lamp. show us that lamp <laughs> It's I got gorgeous. this off yeah, of Gumtree for ten pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're in London, right? I am in London, indeed. Yeah, and um, how how are things? How's how's writing? How's life? Uh, I am just purely focused on writing <laughs> in order to, to deal with life it and just kind of, old, which is everything writing. else I'm ignoring everything else I mean it's nice because like I'm now just doing a lot of writing and um, a yeah. lot of different form of writing it's not just poetry I've been doing like scripts and monologues as well oh amazing um and just kind of like any ideas I've had and like have never had the time to do like mm. well I got the turn now <laughs> yeah because you're involved in quite a few writing groups and collectives in London aren't you uh, I do a couple. So Bob Young Poets is my main one. Um, and I've also been part of the writing room with Jacob Samuel Rose, um, which was originally run by Rachel Long, the legends we love. Uh, <laughs> I did Arvon recently, which was mad. And now I'm doing a leadership program called Making Lemonade. So Amazing. all of the communities, please. <laughs> and are those communities finding ways to stay in touch online? Do you still feel connected to your to Absolutely. people? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're all making a lot of effort to stay in touch via like WhatsApp groups or like Zoom calls and Google Hangouts. Like, at least this is happening with today's mm. technology because I can't yeah. imagine doing this with like dial up internet. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> We'd just do a postcard project. We'd just send each other letters, wouldn't we? If, if, that would be very cute, like actually. This. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, what does home mean to you? I've been asking everyone, what's your, what's your I've idea? I've seen. I've been trying to think of a good answer. I don't have one. <laughs> I think that's something that's very much I'm still looking for and searching and trying to find what it means to me. Mm. Uh, I've moved like many times since moving to London, like four or five times now. It's like my fourth or fifth place in London. 
and I'm probably yeah. going to move again later on this year. So okay. I'm still I'm still searching. <laughs> okay, and um, you got one or two poems to share with us now. I just got the one. Just the, the one. one. Okay, um, what's it called? Yeah. So it's called The Old House. It's written after a fellow Barbahinian poet, Manti Sapina. Uh, they wrote a beautiful poem called The Greenhouse about the old house they used to live in. And I was like, that's beautiful. I want to write one about my old house as well. Right. Now. So yeah. Okay, here we go. So this is The Old House. I don't... Is it? On the last night, I slept on your floor, bed already in the new house. Your walls held each night like an inhale. I would take the stairs, sinking on tiptoe, counting 13 down in the dark, just to be out of bed, unknown. Each morning I wiped the window, wringing out the condensation, amazed lungs could hold so much water. I didn't realise carpets weren't supposed to do that thin. I hid Bibles in you. In shallow baths, looking up at your ceiling with mould constellations, I wondered if I'd ever float. I remember how we had two front doors to lock things out or lock us in. How we couldn't take bins out after sunset. How Halloween made our neighbours monsters who bombed with eggs, how they only ever aimed at us. How your glass shook like a heart attack, but you never, you never broke. In daylight, we cleaned you of yoke, shrapnel, shame. I wished bricks for their glass, their bones. Do your walls and floors still hold my family's implosion? If I put my fingers in your cuts, split plaster and bored, would I feel nuclear again? When I laid on the floor, did you soak up the fallout? Is this why I remember so little? Why I no longer burn? I always wanted to run from you. I sleepwalk back. I wake up. Somewhere. Oh, it gave me shivers. Wow. Thank poem. you. There were so many like striking lines in that poem. I mean, I when it. you said I, I hid Bibles in you, there was something that like really took me aback in that line. Um, I and I almost forgot you were writing about a home and I thought you were writing about a person. So then I was like, how do you hide Bibles in someone? Like it really like played with my mind, that poem. It was really yeah, gorgeous. Thank you. Thank really you. gorgeous. It's just kind of like imagining it to like because like this is about a house that I lived in for 18 years and then we moved away and obviously when you move away you never see that house again you never see the yeah. inside of it again as it was yeah so it's kind of like and I've never visited it since so it's just kind of like that yeah kind of like. <laughs> thank you everyone for the lovely comments yeah it's so many lovely comments <laughs> thank you. it's great to see isn't it all the wows and oh. jeez and my heart and the... <laughs> soak it all in it's for you it's for you um thank you, thank you. <laughs> well and and isn't it great doing this live kind of live sharing so i hope you use your own instagram as well and, and share going forward because i think you're you're a wonderful performer and i think it's great for people to hear your work read out loud by you Thank you. I'm trying to figure out how to like really use Instagram because I've been doing like uh, creative live streams uh, mm -hmm. where I like interview people in a similar format, which is quite fun. Um, Brilliant. So... Is that something we can see if we search for it? So if you go onto my Instagram page, um, yeah. so I run them on Saturday. Um, I run them on, I'm trying to run them on Sundays now, 7 to 9 p.m. We'll bring on guests for each half hour slot um, and then we'll just kind of chat and like it's to like it's to like deliberately not talk about the virus and just have a very mm. nice we just talk about our artistry and our craft it's a big range of artists from photographers to rappers to poets so really it's a nice thing you know who you've got on this sunday <laughs> oh we're still putting that together i can't reveal that yeah. yet okay. but i will, well, announce we will it. tune in on sunday thank you, thank you so much and take thank care thank you take care bye, bye. Oh, that was lovely. And thank you for being so supportive in the comments. It means a lot. As you saw, 
Christy's response to seeing all your comments. It means a lot to us um, to have those because, you know, we're not in a room right now um, together, so we won't be able to hear your applause or whatever noises of approval you're making, but we can see your hearts and your comments and your other emojis that you want to give us. So do do let us know um, that you're watching. Um, so we've got Stavros um, going to come up next. And um, he is in Brighton, I believe. Um, I know Stavros from doing events in Brighton um, with the wonderful Deanna Roger. He used to do an event called Come Rhyme With Me. And you were part of that many times, weren't you, Stavros? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> my first open mic ever. Really? Was yeah. it your first ever? Oh, yeah. And here we are. <laughs> it was because I went to your workshop. I was meant to film it, but then it didn't end up happening. But I was there. That's why I started writing. Wow. I had no, in no interest in poetry beforehand. Wow. Well, that, I, and I it was really know. nice. Well, you're, yeah. you're, you're doing great things in poetry now. And you're, you're really active on the scene. And, and you share your work. And I think it's so important. You know, we write for ourselves. But there's so much we can share. And I think getting to open mics and also uh, kind of sharing your work online is really good. I'm seeing... Christy's in the comments already. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're in Brighton, right? Uh, yeah, I'm in. <clears throat> yeah, I'm in Brighton. Uh, and you're on, you're on your now. own there, aren't you? Yeah, on my own. So yeah, uh, it's been a lot of writing, a lot of uh, music, a lot of like studying for my course. Uh, yeah, um, but not as bad as I thought. Like a lot of the technology has really helped, and yeah. also going to friends and stuff. Like at least it's only one weekend. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's been nice so far. That's Brilliant. It. Well, I'm, I'm glad it's not been too tough for you. And um, really glad you're here. So is, I mean, you, you must have a few different places you consider home. Where do you consider home at the moment? Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult question. I mean, uh, yeah, where I lay my head and I takes precedent. Uh, but yeah, like you, I have, you know, Greek heritage. So, and my family is all there. So I really feel... Uh, connects to that culture, um, but also to English culture. And that's actually what my first poem is about. Um, great, great introduction. So let's let's it. In. Yes. Yeah. Prosexe mi se matiasun, said my grandma. I didn't, under un pardon me. I didn't understand this advice at first. I laughed. Some old superstition, I thought. It warned of an eye, the evil eye. Strains out of its socket, commonplace. Just another tile, tile in our world of stress and deadlines. Certain eye strains matter, of spouses, loved ones, deadline givers as they leer over you. But others are there on the way to work, small windows into other worlds reduced to vague blurs as you rush by to your rendezvous. But then you feel a certain uneasiness. Mental chatter emerges not from you, but from them. The eyes start to worm inside your mind. Vague rules guide your action, bouncing off social codes, in societal cages, lacerating yourself against the bars, stifling rebellion with a few mutters. The eyes so commonplace, they're now prison towers. Those blurs you gave little thought to on the way to your rendezvous, now prison towers. The arbiters of fate, equally afraid of each other, a misery shared in control, in judgment of others, Stemming the flow of positivity with rusty jaw politeness and dead eye generosity. Mm. Wow. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the evil eye is such a powerful symbol, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's meant to be a symbol of protection. I remember when this first, um, you know, started becoming so big um, with, with COVID-19, like, my family were all sending me evil eye emojis yeah, yeah. to protect me. <laughs> oh, so cute. Um, Oh, Brilliant. And great. did you say you've got another poem you want to share? Yeah, I've, I've got one more really short one. I thought since the last one was a bit negative, I'll talk about one. Also, this one was written in Greece. And it's about uh, where I guess where I consider home in myself, mm. where I feel most myself. Right. Yeah. What is calmness? Telling the same story that they have been told for years. Sometimes as screaming gales with waves beating the land with their eternal message. But now the sea lays out only whispers on the sand. The laughter of children playing, distant. Gently vibrating our protagonist's ear. He is not aware he's a protagonist. As he sits on the dock, 
his belly proudly golden in the last rays of sunshine of an average day. He realizes he is out of coffee and cigarettes and lets out a little noise, as if to say, oh well. The little care he gives only barely registering as a noise as he ponders half-heartedly about what calmness might be. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, well, I'm, I'm so glad we got to, got to hear. And I, I never realised that you started writing poetry in my workshop. I, I thought you were already yeah, yeah. a poet. So no. I'm, I'm so proud, so proud to see, you know, how well you're doing with your poetry. Um, where can people see more of your work? I know yeah. we've got everything listed on the Gate Theatre's website as well, so people can find you there. But is there anything else you want to tell people to um, look for? Yeah, so generally I'll be doing stuff through Instagram now, and I've been uploading things. Um, but also I'm part of a collective called the... Uh, Bobble, uh, Bobble Line Poets, and we were preparing a fringe show actually for this Brighton fringe, which of course isn't going ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do lots of events around Brighton. Um, also, another thing to check out would be uh, uh, Gobjaw, which are now doing a Quarren uh, teen sort of like zine, a okay. Quarren scene, if you will. Um, <laughs> and they're asking, all the poets I've seen tonight, like, they're asking for people to upload stuff and they're going to post it online along with a 10 minute video, if you can, and music uh, to sort of, and it will remain up till the, all this is over. So it'd be great if people took part in that. So yeah, those are the things I'm part of at the moment. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna be using my platforms a lot more. So I hope to, yeah, see people around. Great, well, I'll keep my eyes peeled for what else you're doing. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. Thank you, Dean. Take care. All right, so as you can see, we have some amazing talent sharing. Yeah, we <laughs> quarantine is what he said. Um, I love the idea as well. Um, and yeah, lots of rounds of applause there for Stavros. And um, it's really touching to, to see how well he's doing with his poetry. And Mel, are you here? Are you ready to join in? Mel is someone else who has come to one of my workshop so it's really funny when we did this open call um it's nice that people kind of connected to me saw it i guess because i i shared it and um yeah it's really nice that i feel connected through doing this and i hope you feel connected through watching it um and yeah it's just really lovely hello mel hi how are you i'm good thank you brilliant you you are also in brighton right i am yeah 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 have you and stavros met before no, I haven't. Oh. He looks a bit familiar, but I don't... <laughs> You've probably seen him around. Um, Maybe. Yeah, but you'll have to keep your distance if you see him in the future. But um, hopefully <laughs> when this is all over, you can connect on the poetry scene there. Um, do, you get, do you get involved in the poetry scene in Brighton? or? or um, a little bit. I just started to get into it just before all this happened. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's on pause for a bit now. Well, hopefully <laughs> not. We're going to utilise all these online platforms, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And what, what is home for you? It's the question of the night. I think kind of classic where my friends and family are, but I've always been in Brighton. So yeah. Brighton is, is completely my home. I'm born and bred and I absolutely love it. And I don't think I'll go anywhere else. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, are your poems about Brighton? Do you write about Brighton? No, I don't think I actually have written a poem about Brighton, but maybe okay. that's what I have to do. <laughs> mm. What's, what are you going to share now? So I'm going to share three relatively short poems about kind of the the changing nature of what home is right now because of what's going on so it, it's corona vibes but sort of positive okay. amongst sort of anxiety that that's sort of undeniably there as well okay let's hear them okay so this one i wrote just after the lockdown was announced and it's called lockdown 2020 so now we are in lockdown we knew this day would come we felt every emotion and now we're feeling numb for some our jobs continue for others, they've been lost. And for anyone in between, we have our fingers crossed. The next 12 weeks will feel long. The waiting game will play. As we try to remain positive, we'll take it day by day. This is a time to reassess and adapt to something new. But with hope and determination, we know we can break through. So despite this uncertainty and new restrictions to abide, this is just a temporary blip and a storm we need to ride. We will find new ways to smile, creative ways to live. Spread hope and generosity, for now's the time to give. Oh, thank you. Wow, and the second that's... one is... I was just cool. going to say it's so uplifting. Like, you, you managed to capture a really serious situation and put lots of hope in there. 
for us. So thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. And the next one is day five of isolation. It's day five of isolation and the madness has set in. I've been doing daily workouts, but still gained a double chin. I stare out of the window. It's where I move my seat so I can check the numbers of the people on the street. I jump up with rage and fury when I see numbers increase and I have to remind myself I'm not working for the police. This new kind of lifestyle, one we've not endured before, has left me feeling powerless and longing to do more. But instead, I'm sharing poetry, hoping it brings a smile. And if it does, then I'll know that this is all worthwhile. Yes. And, oh, oh sorry. No, go on, go on, carry on. And the final one I wrote a couple of hours ago, actually. Okay. And it's called Day Nine. <laughs> We are all adjusting. Things are starting to align. We didn't realise our resilience and now we're on day nine. New routines have been devised. Books are starting to be read and there's evidence that our actions are reducing the spread. Series are being released early. I can't wait for Killing Eve and I'm working on my goals and the things I must achieve. Old friends have reconnected whilst the world has gone on pause. And if you haven't already, then I think you should bring yours. Amongst all the sadness, beauty can still come through. And how you discover that is completely up to you. Oh, that was beautiful and so relatable. Um, are you writing a poem every day at the moment? Yes, I've done a pledge for my um, Facebook page to write something that's on the matter, but not too depressing um, every day. So, yeah, I'm Brilliant. enjoying it so far. It's flowing, but I'm aware that that, that river might dry up. So I'm a bit... <laughs> Well, also, do you know that April is National Poetry Writing Month? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to try and write a poem every day in the month of April as well. So um, we can root each other on, like we can be rooting for each other for this next month, hopefully. Um, is your Facebook page private or public? Can it's public. Oh. Public. It's called Girl on the Edge Poetry. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, yeah, I'll be looking out for your, for your daily poems. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Thank take you. care. Thanks, bye. Bye. All right, we've come to our last performer. I can't believe it's really flown by for me. I hope you've been enjoying uh, watching. Yes, and everyone's talking about Killing Eve now. I'm actually just started watching it because um, I want to, if series three comes out, I want to be able to like be up to date with all of you. Um, so Sean is going to be joining us. Sean is also here in Glasgow, but not in my house, um, in his own house. Um, so Sean, where are you? Come join us. Um, I want to use this opportunity while Sean is getting logged on um, just to thank the Gate Theatre for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, thank you to Ellen. Thank you to Emma. Thank you to Claire and everyone who works at the Gate Theatre for, you know, believing in this um, platform, um, not the platform of Instagram, but the platform of, of poetry and open mic as a way to connect people. Um, and um, it's really done that. Um, I've been at live events at the gate and I've got a feeling. Hey, Sean. Hey, how are you doing? Feedback here. Okay. How's that? That's much better. Oh, brilliant. Sean, I'm so glad you're here. So you're in Glasgow as well? Yeah, right from you. Not too far from me, but it feels like you're a million miles away. I know. <laughs> what does home mean to you? I think home means lots of things. It's difficult to really say what it, like one definition for it. I think, like lots of people, I get asked, where are you from? And you say, oh, I just live up the road or something. And they go, no, where are you really from? And it's like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm from lots of places. So, I don't know, it's a difficult question. Okay, well, do your, do your poems deal with poems? Yeah, yeah, so, um, I want to do one that's about, like, uh, my experiences as a kid. I used to watch a lot of Kung Fu movies with my grandfather. And so I wrote a poem about that, it's called Shaolin. Imagine, if you will, that I enter your fusion cuisine restaurant dressed in traditional garb, but also wearing aviators, since that is the fashion of these parts. And as I make my way towards you, I am on my mobile phone talking in a different language about childhood memories of late night TV with those long since past. And you 
are armed with a laser rifle, which glows as your eyes widen at the sight of me, and you can't help but shout my name, which immediately alerts the few customers you have to my presence, and you then proceed to jump up and flee out of the windows and side doors. And as I finish my phone conversation, you fire a beam of light towards me, and in response, I throw my phone directly into the beam, which of course causes it to redirect sideways, right through your biggest table, splitting it into pieces, and then in one deft movement, I grab the largest piece closest to me, and as I pick it up and ready myself to charge at you, three chefs from your kitchen all jump through the walls, all armed with cleavers, and I know then, and they know then, that all of us must die, and as I disarm the first chef, and then use his own cleaver against him, I was still dodging your laser beams, all I can think about is the forest and mountains of Henan, and the Plajna Paramita Sort Sutras, which highlight the figure of the Buddhasattva as one who can experience the universe free from attachments, and in doing so becomes aware of the non-duality of the material and immaterial worlds, and how society and the transcendental are one and the same. And as one of your laser brims breaks through my piece of table shield and clips my arm, and as one of your chefs cleaves a chunk of flesh out of my right leg, and as the child sitting on his grandfather's lap in the corner takes another bite from his orange, I smile in the knowledge that my death will not be real, and that no matter what happens here tonight, I will continue onwards, just like they do in the movies. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there's only two people in the <laughs> um, So, I'm, I'm going to say thank you so much, Sean. And, um, yeah, take care. Be well. All right, I've logged Sean out, but although I would have loved to keep talking to Sean. Uh, when I spoke to him, there was a kind of feedback loop there, um, but amazing poetry from him and um, everyone tonight. So thank you to Jessica, thank you to Andres, to Christy, to Stavros, to Melanie and to Sean for being just so wonderful and sharing. And um, yeah, thank you to The Gate for putting this on for us, for providing us with the platform to connect. And um, yeah, keep following them and support them. Um, and you know, go see their shows when they're open again. Um, take care of yourselves and, um, and each other. And um, yeah, stay well. And thank you for listening and watching us. And um, take care. Good night. <laughs>